We Love House with Matlock. Preserve your mixtapes with the Denon DRS610. Hello YouTubers, what you're seeing here is my Denon DRS610. It's what I use to transfer my mixtapes, cassette tapes, to uh, my computer. As you can see here, I've got a, a DAT tape and a cassette tape to show you the differences in terms of why I chose the Denon DR610 to transfer my mixed tapes. As you can see, they both use a precision horizontal loading mechanism uh, in order to uh, precisely uh, lock the tape into place uh, when you are loading up your cassette tapes, or in this case, also the DAT tapes. And as you can see here, these are a collection of my mixed tapes back in the uh, 90s and leading up to the year 2000 when mixed tapes were hot and popular back in the days before uh, MP3s ever really came out. Before we start, uh, there are a few things that we do need. Uh, first of all, uh, you're going to need duster buster or air blower or a compressed can air blower. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is 99% rubbing alcohol so that there are no uh, residue from the water. Also, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, uh, one that is preferably with a fat head at the end. And lastly, you're going to need some Q-tips or cotton swabs for the ears, uh, which is what we're going to use to clean the capson and the uh, cassette deck head. So now I'm going to start off with my rubber mat, which is what I'm going to use to uh, put my cassette deck on. Again, I'm going to show you the four things you're going to need to uh, do the quick maintenance and cleaning of your cassette deck. So to start off, let's uh, take the cassette deck and I'm going to show you where the screws are. The two on the right side. Uh, the two on the left side. And four along the top. It's a total of eight screws you only need to remove in order to open up the case for the cassette deck. And that's all the screws you'll ever need to remove to do the cleaning. Well, as you can see here, I'm going to show you my fat screwdriver and my precision screwdriver that I use for computers. And as you can see, when I place my precision screwdriver on the screws, uh, it feels a little loose. And uh, that's definitely not good to use because you could strip the screws on your cassette deck. So this is why I recommend that you get a fat screw head where the, uh, the, lock, where the lock between your screw and your screw head is tight and not loose. This will prevent your screws from being stripped when you try to twist your screws off. Uh, another recommendation is that uh, when you first try to turn, just do a short turn first just to loosen the, uh, the screws before you do a full turn. The screw heads may be tight, and this is why I recommend doing just a short twist just to loosen the screws up. The music you hear in the background is all available through We Love House. Uh, there are a couple of promos. So in order to remove the casing, 
as you can see my hands, I, my hands are at the back of the deck and I am pulling the case on the left and right side uh, away from the wall of the cassette deck. It may be a little bit tough, so you may need to just try to pull a little bit and lift up a little bit by wiggling it from the back as you start uh, pulling it away and being able to wiggle it. The lift up from the back end and not from the front end. Uh, you can see me lifting it up by about 40 to 45 degrees before I remove it from the front. Uh, this is because there is a, uh, a little bit of a lip at the end, plus there is a little clip, which I'm showing you right now, a little ground clip uh, that touches the top of the lid, I guess for grounding reasons. Now I'm going to turn the cassette deck around again. So now the front of the deck is facing you. And now we're going to plug the power in for the cassette deck because we need to open up the tray. So let's turn on the cassette deck and press the eject button. And once you see it ejects, then turn the power off and plug the power from the power bar. As you can see, we're moving in from the front to the left and the camera is moving up towards the top left so you can see where we are cleaning. You should be able to see the capstan and the rubber pitch roller. Now we're gonna take the rubbing alcohol, we're gonna open it up and we are going to take a cotton swab and dip into the rubbing alcohol. Uh, before you pull it out completely, you need to uh, just squeeze the excess off. Uh, you don't want it dripping wet, you just want it to be uh, damp enough so you can clean. So just uh, push the cotton swab along the side wall of the rubbing alcohol bottle so you can remove the excess rubbing alcohol. And only do it to the one side. So we are only going to be cleaning the caps in and not the pitch roller. The reason for this is as you can see in the top left corner, if you try to clean the pinch roller with rubbing alcohol, it ends up drying out the rubber. And as you can see, it causes some cracks and bubbling. And this will affect your cassette because uh, the pressure pressing between the capstan and the pitch roller will cause marks and lines going across your cassettes, which will degrade the sound as you try to play back your cassette. Now, as you can see, I'm taking the cotton swab and I'm using the moist end of the cotton swab and I'm now going to clean the capsin, which is the metal rod that you see me cleaning. Just gently scrub around the entire rod. Uh, as you can see, this one is very well maintained. You don't really see any debris at all on the cotton swab. And once you are done scrubbing the capsin, uh, now flip it over to the dry side and just dry off any excess uh, rubbing alcohol. By default, the rubbing alcohol will dry up uh, pretty quickly, but it's good to just uh, do it again with the dry side of the cotton swab. I am now at the back end of the cassette deck facing down so you can see the cassette head through the hole of the tape loader transport is. And as you can see, I am uh, cleaning the uh, cassette head with the cotton swab. Uh, I would suggest that you use another cotton swab, just uh, use the rubbing alcohol on the one side and keep the other side dry. I've switched you to the right side of the cassette deck uh, in an angle so you can see uh, where I'm coming in from the right side to do the cleaning of the cassette head. And again, when you are cleaning the cassette head, just gently uh, rub or scrub on the head. Do not press hard on it because you don't want to misalign it or do any damage to the cassette heads. Now that we're done cleaning the cassette head with the rubbing alcohol, it's time to use your duster buster or air canister to blow off any dust that's inside and any loose debris or cotton debris from the cleaning. It's also a good maintenance to keep everything uh, dusted off, especially from any 
any of the capacitors or circuitry uh, and any of the mechanisms. Now we're going to check the capacitors on the circuit board, which is what uh, help keeps the cassette deck running normally. As you can see on the upper left corner, uh, when you see any kind of bulging or any kind of liquid coming off the top, whether it's white or clear, that's an indication that the capacitor has blown. Uh, in this case, I would recommend replacing them either through electronic store so as you can see here, I'm checking out all the capacitors, making sure that there's no bulging or liquids coming out. Uh, they should be nice and flat. Now that we're done, let's plug the power back in and just turn the power on and the loading mechanism will automatically close and then you can turn off the deck. Now it's time to put everything back together. So we are going to reverse the way we took everything apart. So we're going to turn the deck around so the back is facing you. So we're going to now take the case and start from the front and we're going to go in at a 45 degree angle. As you slide the lip into the front, you should be able to snug the rest of it down. As you can see, I have pushed the rest of the case downwards. And again, it's important that you do this on the 45 degree angle because there is a front round metal clip at the front that uh, is supposed to touch the case that acts as a ground. Now we're going to put the screws back in the same order that uh, we have unscrewed them. Uh, make sure you do have the right screws in place. Uh, I would recommend that when you put the screws in, uh, go backwards a little bit so that the screw can be uh, snugged in uh, naturally and then screw forwards to be able to uh, ease the screw in easily and so that you're not forcing the screw in. So I go back a little bit to allow the screw to snug in, then I go forwards once I feel that the screw has, the grooves of the screw has naturally locked in. The Denim DRS610 and the entire DRS series you should be able to open up and do the quick maintenance as I'm showing in the video with the entire series of the DRS as I believe the mechanisms are all similar. This includes the DRS 810 which I believe is also available on the market that I've seen already on eBay. Now here's what everything looks like when I put everything back. Uh, as you can see there, I've also got a uh, Techniques cassette deck in order to keep good maintenance of the cassette decks. This is what I use strictly to do my fast forward and rewind so that in that way I do not wear the mechanics of my Denon DRS 610. I do a full fast forward until the end and I do a full rewind back to the beginning. As you can see the logic controls of the eject button, how smoothly it uh, takes in the cassette and now I'm doing a fast forward. On the top right corner you see the uh, close up view of the counter and you can see that it does do a slow fast forward then it goes into a high speed mode which is what the icon on the top left side of the counter indicates. And then as it slows down, the uh, icon disappears. And then when I go to do my rewind, it does the same thing. For good maintenance, because cassette decks are so rare nowadays, uh, you don't want to buy a brand new one because the brand new ones are definitely not as well made. And, uh, and with the exception of TIAC, but even with TIAC, uh, their, their decks are still not compared to the ones that were built back then. Uh, and definitely the new IONS 
they're definitely not as well made and you can risk uh, your cassettes being chewed up uh, or having some sort of marks in your cassette tape which will could cause a crease uh, which will affect your sound qualities now since this is all in real time you can see that the full fast forward and rewind back to the beginning of the tape on uh, my cashmere mix tape here now live from space in London uh, it's about a 40 minute cassette tape uh, 40 minutes on each side and uh, full fast forward and rewind is probably about uh, about a little over one minute It's time to pop in my cassette into my DRS 610 horizontal front load mechanism just like the DAT machines which are very precise on both machines which will ensure good transport every cassette tape that I've played back so far in this cassette deck has been perfectly clear and dynamic there are no wobbly noises with the highs or lows. You know, some of the set decks that you use, sometimes you hear the highs going up and down. It's almost like a filtering kind of noise. This cassette deck, the alignment seems to be perfect. And uh, now as you can see the results, I've uh, run my playback for my cassette deck through my Motu uh, 828 MK2 for a superior clean sound and uh, recording it directly to my SoundForge Audio Studio. Thanks for uh, watching and I hope this helps preserve your mixtapes. We love house with Matlock. Preserve your mixtapes with the Denon DRS 610.